I would like to explain how we are thinking about AI as a country, as India. We think that we should democratize technology, which means technology should be accessible to a very large section of people. The startup ecosystem that we have developed over the last decade, they should get the best of the resources which are available to the researchers and startups anywhere in the world. That's one fundamental way we are thinking. To do that, the way we have structured the entire thing is we created an AI mission and part of the mission, we developed a very large pool of GPUs. As we speak, we have about 34,000 GPUs, which is a common compute facility available to everybody who wants to use it. Now, this is over and above what is available in the corporate sector. Many private companies are developing their own data centers and hyperscalers. But the facility should be available to a very large section of the society, students, researchers, scholars, uh, startups, everybody, they should be able to get access to it. That is the first thing. Second, we know that AI will be a very different technology compared to what we have seen in the past. The way we should treat it in the society to make sure that we get the benefits while we can prevent the harms of the entire new technology. Our approach is very unique compared to many other countries. Our approach is that we have to adopt a techno-legal approach towards the use of AI, which means many of the harms which come from use of this technology can be solved by using technological means. You cannot solve it by simply creating a new law. That's the approach and that approach we are implementing using a very large variety of technical institutes who are developing these solutions. For example, one of the IITs, IIT Jodhpur is developing a solution for detecting deep fakes. That's the second piece. Third is, while there are large open source models which are available in the entire world today where we can use them and develop our solutions, we also need models which don't have many of the biases which go into training the models which are trained in other geographies. So how do we prevent those biases? So we are also focusing on developing our own large language models and also very focused models on certain sectors, sector specific small models, which as you gave the example of predictive maintenance in railways, as for example, in the power grid management, for example, in healthcare, for example, in education. So very focused models, which can then help us solve the problems at a large population scale. That's the third approach. Fourth part of our approach is today we are having some of the best talent in the world and uh, as per the global international rankings by Stanford and others, we have the highest concentration of AI talent in the world. But this should be sustained. We must sustain the talent pipeline. So we have changed the entire course curriculum in our engineering and uh, technical institutes. We have taken up talent development at three different levels. One is the mass level, where people can understand what is the use of AI, for example, data annotation. That's a mass scale. And we have taken up application level, and we have taken up research level. So in a sense, our AI mission is basically uh, looking at four different ways by which we are trying to harness the power of this new technology in our society.